In a previous video, we changed all the brake pads. We're now going to bleed the braking system, including the ABS module using dealer tool. So the first thing we're going to do is take the reservoir cap off. I want to get the brake fluid out. There's no point pumping dirty brake fluid through your system. You might as well syringe it out first. So you can see here that the diaphragm is deformed. Now that's due to the pads wearing out and then it's sucking brake fluid through the system and obviously sucking the diaphragm out of shape. So I'm using a syringe to suck out the old brake fluid but make sure it doesn't drop too low that it allows air into the system. And now to top up the reservoir with clean brake fluid. I like to write the date on the top of the bottle of when I opened it. So I've got my bleed bottle and my siphoning tube connected up. I'm just going to crack the nipple to make sure it does come apart. And at the brake lever end, I've taken the um, reservoir cap off. And I want to make sure I can reach the lever so I can pump it when I open the bleed nipple. Now my method for bleeding the brakes, I like to pump the lever several times to build pressure. Hold the lever in, then open the bleed nipple. Close the bleed nipple and then let go of the lever. Then I like to keep repeating this process until I think I've bled the brakes enough. Now on some braking systems, if it's a bit old and hasn't been changed for a while, it'll be quite obvious that you'll see clean brake fluid as opposed to dirty brake fluid, or brake fluid with no bubbles in it. But the brake fluid on this bike is quite clean, so it's hard to tell old from new. So I'll just do a couple of reservoirs full of brake fluid. It would be nice to know how much the capacity of the brake lines are and how many uh, reservoirs full you actually need to do. If somebody does know the answer, post it up. When I'm happy with that, I'll just have a little clean around with some soapy water and then I'll start the other side. So we'll do the right hand side in the same way we did the left hand side. And remember to keep an eye on your brake fluid reservoir. You don't want this to drop too low. So on to the rear brakes, getting the reservoir cap off first. Notice the large amount of rags. It's quite tucked in in the back there and you don't want to tip brake fluid over any of your paintwork. So I tend to use a syringe. Makes it easier just to squirt a little bit of brake fluid in there. Okay, so using the same method on the back as we did on the front. So Pump in the brakes first, holding it, then opening the valve, closing the valve and releasing the brake. Again, keep repeating this until you're happy you've done it enough. On this model, be aware that there is a bleed nipple on the master cylinder. And I always like to have a little clean around whether I think I've spilt something or not. So with the brakes now bled, let's move on to using dealer tool to bleed the ABS modulator. So I tried to get some information about bleeding the ABS modulator and it's quite hard to come by. Especially for this bike as there is no manual for it. There is one online. Um, I have 
have um, been on there and downloaded a few pages, but I didn't have one for this. So I'm only doing what I think is correct. So don't necessarily follow me, do what you think is correct. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is connect your dealer tool OBD reader to your um, bike's ECU and then plug it into the computer. So once you're connected to the computer, you then need to click the button that says connect to ABS unit. As far as bleeding the ABS modulator is concerned, it's very similar to bleeding the brakes in itself. The only difference is you've got to press the button on the computer that says bleed brakes. So you've got to press the button that says bleed brakes, pump the brake and open the bleed nipple. Now you don't need three pairs of hands to do this. The simplest way to do it is to pump the brake as you would normally. Press the button that says bleed brakes and you do get enough time then to get onto the spanner and open the bleed nipple. So let's try and see that on a split screen. First of all we're going to pump the brakes. Then we're going to click on the bleed system button which then gives us plenty of time to get back down to the spanner. Open the nut as usual and then close the bleed nipple as you would normally. Now I wasn't sure how many times to bleed the system per caliper. It ranges from once to three times depending on who you ask and like I say information is quite hard to get hold of. So to be on the safe side I've done it three times per caliper. The only thing you must do is leave five minutes between each bleed so the modulator doesn't overheat. So here's a circuit layout of the ABS system. Now you can see that the front system runs off the same circuit so I don't think you need to bleed both brake calipers in the front. Now had I seen this circuit layout beforehand I would have only done one. Okay let's have a look at doing the front caliper. It's much the same as the back one but we'll have a look at it anyway. So clicking on the bleed system on the computer gives you a chance to get down to the bleed nipple and open it. The computer then says bleed in system. Then bleed complete, shut the nipple. So I did this three times per caliper. I think once is enough personally. Uh, just to get the old brake fluid out of the system and I would probably only do one caliper in the front. So once you've finished bleeding your ABS modulator you then need to bleed your brakes again to get all the old brake fluid that came out of the modulator out of the system. So thanks for visiting the channel. If you liked that video hit like and subscribe.